Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, welcome back to Nigel's Modeling Bench. Ready for some more waffling, are we? So uh, apparently you don't mind my waffling. Apparently some of you actually like my waffling. But I don't waffle as much as Hara Houdini. Well, that's because he's Australian, isn't it? So um, anyway, uh, this is the video with the Hobby Boss corrections and suggested changes to the kit to get it more accurate. Um, as I say, as I've said before, this isn't rivet counting. I'm not nitpicking on tiny, tiny little features. This is major, major things that you're going to see as soon as you look at the model from a few feet away. So um, without further ado, let's get on with it. Let's get on the bench and um, let's see what I've done with this one. OK, then here we are at the bench. Um, I'm going to start by saying that this video, I think, will be done in many parts, uh, many, many little segments. So I'm afraid you're going to see the camera keep changing position because obviously the parts are getting bigger. So I need to keep moving the camera to get the parts in. Um, and like if I if I had the camera now in a position so I could fit the barrel in the screen, then these parts would be this big. So I'm going to keep changing. So it's up a change a bit, but um, sorry about that. But it's the, I think it's the best way to film it. So looking at this kit from the bottom up, let's start with the tracks. The actual gauge of the tracks is perfect. It's about 20.1 millimeters. Um, standard gauge is 1435. So yeah, really, really close. Well, it's it's bang on really. Um, I'm not sure how that compares with HO00 for the model railway guys, but for a 70 second scale kit, the, the track gauge is absolutely perfect. However, the track rails um, are extremely wide. As you can see here, um, 2.8 so that's going to be what's that 140 that's going to be something like eight inches wide um, and the actual height is 5.24 millimeters which makes them what's that about four, 15 inches high 382 millimeters so you know um, if you look at it in scale if I could get if I can get some focus here if you look at it, the 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 track is where is it? the track is like up to the top of the the guy's boots. This is a little seventy second scale Star Wars figure. Um, so yeah, the track is up to the top of his boots. And if you look in my book here, I think it's the last marking I've got. Um, where are we going? Yeah, here's a pic of picture of the tracks here, and you can see the guy stood next to the tracks there there's they're just standard track rails you can see these guys here on the left there's no way they're that high so i'm going to take a trip to antics today and see if i can get some ordinary double o h o um railway track and see if i can make that fit in the track beds i'll let you know how that works out but um yeah this is definitely out of scale so i've, I've heard some people say that the the dora gun used a stronger track it didn't it just used more sleepers so that's the track rail out of the way. So that's something that needs correcting if you're uh, if you're fussy, um, like me. The rail cars, um, I've kept these parts on the sprue here. Where am I? I've kept these parts on the sprue. I don't need to cut them off. I've cut these off so I can demonstrate what I'm talking about with the um, the distance between them and everything. I should have actually cut the other one off, so that one should be that way round. So yeah, they've got this right, this angle here. Although I think the angle is probably a bit too much, probably a bit too much, but it's there on the saw art kits. It's hardly there at all, if, if at all. Um, so you've got this angle here. This is probably more like what it should be like in, in reality. But then when you add when you add this to it, you can see the, the angle is quite um, quite substantial. It's quite a quite a large angle on there. And I think they've done that to squeeze it in underneath the rail cars. Now. Before I start talking about axle pitches and stuff, this is jumps out at me straight away with this kit whenever I see it. And if you notice, the rail cars here, let's ignore this side because of the gloss. If we look at the rail cars here, you can see that they're they're spread apart. I don't know why they've done this, I don't know where they got the references from, but they've spread the rail car right apart, hence forcing this forward one here up and underneath the main frame of the gun which would probably explain why they've got that massive angle on there. But I think it's also affected this part here. I think this should be lower down. 
Um, so yeah, it's a shame they've done this. I mean, it would take a lot of work to correct that, but to re to do these rail cars is an absolute doddle. Let me show you how. Okay, right. Now I hope I don't lose anyone here. Um, I'm going to try and word this <laughs> so that everyone can keep up. It's I sort of get confused myself sometimes because this all becomes a bit of a jumble. I'm not trying to call anyone stupid or anything. I'm no no way would I ever do that. But this is um yeah this is a bit mental at points. Um, hopefully you just grasp it straight away. Okay, so we know that the kit depicts these wheels too these bogies too far apart. Yeah, we can see that. Um, and I'll show you a picture in the book just to prove what I'm saying. Um, what I believe is correct. Um, if you look at this image here, you can see that here's your subcarrier, and you can see that these cars are not anything like as far as part as Hobby Boss have depicted them. Yeah, you can see, I mean, they're only what they sort of one pitch away. You can see here they're miles apart. And that's something that, like, as I say, always takes my eye. As soon as I look at a built Hobby Boss kit, I've only seen a couple, but it just, bang, takes my eye straight away. All the, all the builds, you see there's a couple of builds on um, YouTube, and it just takes my eye straight away. So there's an easy way to change this, and there's a, a more difficult way to make it absolutely spot-on accurate. So let's look at the easy way first. So... Again, like with 144 scale kit, ignore these eight wheels in the middle and just focus on the outer two, outer two axles, should I say. And this is the way the Hobby Boss kit is depicted. Okay. So the wheel car the bearing carrier goes in here in this slot. So this is the way the, the wheels are depicted. And you can see how far apart they are in the middle. And then the subcarrier goes on the top. And you can see there what we've got. And those wheels, the, the axles, I'll, I'll draw a line for you, they are there and there. So you can see they're a long way apart. Yeah. Now, the pitch of the wheels is also wrong. Um, they've probably decided on these pivot points. And then because the actual body of the, the, the gun comes down like this, they thought, oh shit, we, we, we can't fit them in. So we're going to have to squash it all up. So if you want to be really, really accurate with your axle spacings, we need to change the axle spacing from 20 mil to 20.8 or maybe go 21. Um, because the, the center lines on the kit are 80, should be 83.3 if we're working on six meters on the um, axle center lines. But let's just forget that for a minute. Let's look at the easy option. Um, I'll first show you this is how it should be. The distance here. The kit is 216 millimeters across across the centers and it should be 201. So what I'm going to do is move it in like so. And now you can see how it should look. And again, let's forget about the, the middle eight wheels. Let's just concentrate on the outer two. And that's how it should look. And you can see straight away, when I put that on top, it's a lot more accurate, isn't it? You can see that just like in the real thing, that fifth wheel is kind of tucked up under. Now, the funny way that, the, the funny thing is that what Hobby Boss have done here, I don't know why they've done it, is they've put the pivots here and here on, on the um, subcarriers. Well, the pivot should be here and here. The pivots should be on the end. And then that pivot should sit directly over the middle of the fifth, the five wheels. So if we put this like this now, you can see that that is roughly correct. Yeah. So to do that, if you drill this hole here and this hole here, if you redraw this hole eight millimeters further out, so this would be the one that's sitting innermost. So if this is the front of the gun, that way is forward, that way. So if you drill these holes here eight millimeters further out, like I've got them marked here, 
yeah redraw them in those positions then what will happen is you'll pull them in so instead of being like this so I'm off the bloody camera again instead of being like this yeah they'll be like this now these are too long they'll have to be cut off as well this section here will have to be cut off this is um just there for, for to make it look right because otherwise it would have just ended here the other thing to note is when you put these on the it's too high there's too much of a gap here so that needs to be lowered down as well um, and again referring back to this picture in the book you can see how low they sit they're extremely low sitting on there you can see up at this end here there's, there's hardly any gap at all so that's my suggestion for the easy way to do it just redrill those holes let's get this off of here it's quite a tight fit and i don't want to break anything so if you just redrill these holes eight millimeters further forward and aft that will pull the rail cars together you'll also need to remove some of this here um as i say it's uh i don't know why they've added all this on it's a great big lump that doesn't need to be there um and the other thing is, as I say, the pitch of the axles is incorrect. So if you really want to make it right, then you need to move the wheel centers apart by 0.8 millimeters each. And then that will give you your correct pitch. You can actually see on here how they've, you can, it looks almost all squashed up here, whereas this should be more open up. So I would be making my cuts here and here. And extending it there because if you look at the other kits and you look at the the model the, the, the real thing then this isn't so squashed up whereas if you look at the other models they've, they've got it all opened up so yeah it seems like nobody's got it dead right but um you know that could be con construed as rivet counting that's my inner self coming out but you know if you just move those eight mil you get it right and what you're aiming for is having the the middle of the fifth axle the middle of the five axles on each car over the center of this flat here because that is um correct i mean the, the, if you look at the center of these flats here they measure 120 millimeters apart in scale they should be 118 it's 8500 millimeters in reality where those pivots are so if you make those come over the center of those five wheels like that then it's going to be correct and there you go Right, so uh, I hope you've uh, swallowed that one. It was all a bit difficult, but as I say, it's really, even if you've actually finished your model, it's built and displayed, you could take it off, draw these holes eight millimeters apart, slice some off of there, touch it up with a brush, and I think you'll have a much better looking model. Um, and if I've set that seed in your mind now, then uh, go do it. Um, the other thing to notice on here that they've got right, um, the, the wood planking, it doesn't go all the way along as they've depicted in the saw art 144th kit the the wood just is there just for the um the crew to walk on so obviously the crew won't be walking under here under this area so it's correct so that's something good and this one they wouldn't be walking at all so hobby boss have depicted that correctly like they have most of everything else they've done and also these steps on the front they're um they're a little bit thick they could be thinned down a touch but they're lovely um, much better than the chunky representations in the other kit. When I say other kit, I mean the 144th. That's what I'm referring to. So that's that out of the way. Um, so we've mentioned the fact that the tracks are too high. The wheels, um, they leave a little to be desired. Um, I, I don't really want to cut one off the sprue because I don't want to lose it. But if you look here, they, they're very, very thick and they need to be shaved down on the back. Now, you could shave them down so they're pretty much flush with the back of the wheel. Um, in reality, you only really need to do the end wheels because you won't see the, the wheels that are between them. So, you know, you've got five here. If you just did the two end ones, um, you wouldn't see these underneath the rail cars because they'd be hidden away, sort of like that. But the M ones would be exposed. So, uh, yeah, I've never seen a railway wheel like that. 
um, with that great big thick flange on the back. Um, other than that, all good. I mean, these these um, bearings are, are very accurate, and uh, these springs are very nice. It's all it's all very lovely. Oh, and it's also worth noting that where the other kits, neither of the kits include this piece of webbing that goes in here. There it is. Um, it's it's in this kit. So yeah. And again, when we look back at this photograph again. You can see there's the piece of webbing I'm talking about, which is there, which isn't there on the other ones. So, um, yeah, well done, Hobby Boss. You've produced a beautiful model here. So I think that's about it for the subcarriers. Now let's take a look at the subordinates. Here's a little uh, snippet I've just um, just added into the video. Uh, this is the Hobby Boss track that you get with the um, with the kit. Yeah. And as you'll know, I commented just now that it's a little bit large uh, and it's actually 5.2 millimetres by by 4. Point, well, 4.25 millimetres, which in 70 second scale, I think makes it about 380 millimetres high. So, sort of, you know, to the top of your boots, if you like. Um, this is a piece of trumpeter track from a 35th scale kit. And I've got a little nubbin on there just to take off. Uh, the first thing to notice is, A, it's got ejector pin marked all the way down it, which is a big shame. Um, but it's actually narrower and shorter than the 170 second scale Hobby Boss track. And if I put the two together, here you can see what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what Hobby Boss, I mean in fact this track goes into the Hobby Boss base. But it's all floppy because it's so narrow. So I don't know what they were thinking of. Um, you know, it, it's crazy. So uh, I'm going to see if I can get some double O metal track to replace this and put it in this um, this rail bed. But I thought I'd just add this bit in because I thought that's quite interesting. That right. So these are our subordinates. Obviously, we get two of these and two of these. There's an outer and inner section. They just go together. Um, Positive notes of this. This is all very nice. Um, this this detail here with the the jack detail, far nicer than the other two kits. Even the thirty fifth scale isn't this nice. These holes are correctly cut out as they should be. Um, the jack detail, as we know, is correctly positioned, and also you get the eye frame, the eye beams, uh, which are very very nice. If if you really want to go to town, you could remove this or cut the slim them down and add some I-beams to them. All of these structures here in reality are I-beams so you have a vertical and then a flange welded onto it or a, or they would have used an I-beam um, or like a T-section beam you know that they, they would be that's how they were it was a flange welded onto the structure and then a, a flange welded on the top and this this would have given you this uh, this wide center section this wide front section sorry. Um, but you know, depends how far you want to go really. Certainly worth doing on the 35th scale, I'm not sure about on this one. Um, so you've got the hand wheels all the way along here, which is correct. But then on the inside, they should be the same. And they're not, they've got no hand wheels in here. So you could do with adding some there, take some resin mouldings or, or whatever. So yeah, you could do that. Um, but by far the detail depicted here is the best, the pipe work and everything. You know, it's, um, They've done a really stunning job of this model and it is beautiful. Um, so this is all good. So yeah, what do we need to do? We need to add some hand wheels in here if we want to be more accurate. Um, we also need to look at the positioning of the center parts here. Um, now they go in there like this. Um, that's not necessarily correct. They should be further back, I believe. And also, they've given you two rears. This is actually a rear. Uh, there should be a line down in the middle of there as well. I'll need scribing, a parting line. This is actually two separate halves. Um, I'll show you a picture in a second. So this is the rear. Um, Hinton is as it's shown. The front section is much slimmer and taller and fits in here. So they've actually got that incorrect. 
um, and would require some scratch building if you want to make it more accurate. It is quite visible. When I said this is this will be the front of the gun. I'm not sure which round I've got this kit, but um, let's just imagine because it's pretty symmetrical. If this is the front, this is the rear. This would sit back here, um, and the one at the front should be a lot slimmer and, and more back here. I think this one should be more back here as well. Um, and while I'm at it, so I only have to get the book out once. There should be some hatch detail here. You can see they've got the recesses. But there's no hatch detail to go in there um, and you can see here in this photograph here's the the hatches that should be in there this is how you're looking at like this like that there you go so yeah there's no there's no hatch detail in there but having said that the tread plate is spot on um, these are those boxes I'm talking about as you can see here as I, as I told you this they're split in half so they they would have bolted it to each side of the train like this and this like this and this and then they would have got them next to each other and bolted them together like this and here so basically um this is a rear you can see it says on Hinton that's, that's left I think that's bracket or platform or something uh Hinton which is rear and you can see that it's actually going on over the rail car whereas this one is is too far back i think i think it should be more up here up here rather than back here it should be more up here um and certainly the front one i mean this is nothing like it it's a far slimmer you can see it here it's a far slimmer um job and it's square on the top it doesn't have an angle and you can see from actually just notice that while I'm looking at it here you can see that the upper straight section comes along and then starts to go down so you can see that it is actually right back here right back here that um, right back here so I'll book in the way um, so you can see it should be further back rather than right the way up here as they're depicted so you can see that there, this is the front of the train. So as you're looking at it here, the barrel would be sticking into the camera um, and the same here. So there we go. Um, so yeah, if you want to make that more accurate, scratch build a box for the front and move this one up, move this one up a bit. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Um, so, you know, very simple little bit of scratch building. Scribe a line down the middle of there because that would be a definite, definite parting line in there. Um, but yeah, other than that, wonderful. Um, really, really nice, really, really crisp. And as I say, if you didn't do any of this that I'm talking about now, you know, 99.9% 9, .9 of people are never going to notice. But if I come along with a model, I'll, I'll see it. I wouldn't say anything because I would never pick on someone's model, but um, I would notice it. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so one other thing. Um, I have just done some more measuring. The actual centres here are, sorry, I'm too far out. The centre point from here to here on the real thing is 30 metres. Um, this one is nigh on spot on. It's, it's, it's nothing, sh it's, it's, it's very, very slightly too short by about two millimetres, if that. So we're not going to worry about that. This area here, as I said when I was reviewing the um, the bogies, this area has been compromised because Hobby Boss have decided to get those rail cars so far apart. Um, and it would appear that this angle here is wrong, but also they've squashed this up. Um, looking at uh, scaling off the drawings I've got, I know drawings are never completely 100%, but scaling off the drawings I've got where I've got the defined um, pivot points here, for the um for the subcarriers this should be just under so um this dimension here should be 60 millimeters in 70 second scale um so this dimension here should be like 59 across three jacks and as you can see if i pick up the position the center position where the three jacks go it's about 54. so this area here has been compromised rivet counting i know 
but you may need to do something if you correct the rail cars you may need to do something to get this area looking right so I don't know I thought maybe just cut it in half and stretch it but no you, you can't do that because this is actually correct so it's just this area here that's been compromised so um yeah you'd have to be a complete nutter like me to do anything about that okay the barrel <laughs> Here we go, you're gonna like this. If Hobby Boss tried to say they didn't copy saw art when they did this barrel, um, they're lying. This 144 scale barrel, as we know, is too long. And I've drawn in some sections here that I think need to be removed. Well, you can do it this way around. I think need to be removed to make it correct. And if you watch the 144 scale, you know what I'm about to say. The specification of the barrel is, I, can't, I should have looked, it's 32 or 34 metres. Anyway, in 144 scale, that breaks down to 222 millimetres. And if you measure the length of the barrel from here to here, it's 222 millimetres or thereabouts. So it looks like they've thought of as the barrel as this, without the what I call the breech. Um, probably the wrong terminology, but I call this part the breech. So if you actually measure the length from here to, um, if you measure the length of the breech here from this end to the flange here, the front of the flange here, it's 64 millimeters. If you then take what I, the suggestions I've made to um, shorten the barrel, you end up with this part being 158. 158 plus 64 is 222. So it looks like the kit manufacturers have looked at this being the barrel and made it, scaled it up, you know, made it proportional and everything to make it 222 millimeters long. But as we know, as I showed you in the, if I can get this in now, if I can get it in shot, if you look at that barrel there and then look at the 144 scale barrel next to it, you can see straight away that there's a uh, Bit of a difference in length you can see the diameters are practically identical in the photograph but look how long it is so yeah it's not right now this really surprised me if you measure the length of any of these sections of barrel okay so let's just take this section here in the middle if i measure the length of it it comes out at 56 millimeters or 56 and a half mil yeah, double 56 and a half mil is 113. Look at that, 113. If you measure this part here, it's 53. 106. <laughs> if you measure this part here, it's exactly double the length of that. So they have exactly copied the saw art gun. They've even included this, this false part here, which doesn't exist. So... Look at this chart. Now, if you don't know what this chart means, look back at my 144 scale um, corrections video. But basically, I've included all three kits on here. So what you need to do is measure, but this is what I'm gonna do, is measure from this point here, which is not the, on the Hobby Boss kit, it is correct, it's that point there. Because they've included this bolted ring flange with the, the breech. So, Basically, let's show you on the Hobby Boss kit. If you measure from there, measure from there, 49 millimeters, draw a line. Then measure from there, 62 millimeters, draw a line, remove that section in between. Yeah. Then measure a section 95 millimeters, and then the end of the barrel there, which is 106, or the end of that part, which is 106, remove that. And, and keep going all the way up to the end of the barrel and you will end up with a barrel which is 316 millimeters long which is the correct length for a 70 second scale barrel now on these two kits on the 72nd and the 31st you've got the rifling part at the end um, so you'll need to make that fit back in the end of this barrel here um, or do your own work or whatever with that but um, yeah that is my suggestion to end up with the correct looking barrel and what I'll probably do is modify this one first and then I'll put a video up and show you what it looks like because um, it just looks so much better when it's shortened.
All right, so there's that. If you want to pause and save that, you can. Um, but that's basically the chart that I've come up with for where the material should be removed and how much should be removed. And this bit here, this option, um, in... What was that? 40, that was 44 millimetres in 144th scale, 144th scale. So it's going to be 88 millimetres in 72nd scale. And what I've suggested here is perhaps instead of removing all the metal, the metal, all the plastic from the end of the barrel, remove 24 millimetres there, 20 millimetres there. So on this one, it would be what 48 millimetres there, 40 millimetres there. You can see the difference. You can either hack it all off of there or you can take half and half yeah so up to you um but remember to re-establish the end of the the barrel so that's it for the uh, barrel oh one other thing quickly before i go um this barrel comes in halves <gasps> means you've got to stick it together oh, oh my god and get rid of a seam which is a oh jesus um it's not that bad um Everybody seems to buy aluminium barrels these days for everything. I mean, if you really don't know how to do something like this and make it seamless, drop a comment down below and I'll show you how I do it. It's, um, you know, I've just done the uh, the great big Russian gun, I can't remember what it's called now, and that barrel is massive. You know, it's, it's, it's this size in 35th scale. Um, so, you know, it's not, a, it's not the end of the world. It's not difficult. If you really want to see a video of how I do it, I'll show you. But uh, it's a basic standard modelling skill. And um, I'd hate to think of, in the future, people running away from building a model tank or a huge gun because it doesn't have an aluminium barrel. You know, I think you can buy an aluminium barrel for this, but it's incorrect. It's the wrong length. So there you go. So, uh, yeah, that's that little uh, rant over with. Okay, so now I want to get into the uh, the general stuff. This is the general stuff I've spotted, errors in the kit, whatever. Um, and, and indeed the good points about the kit. And there are a lot of them. Um, railings. Now, unfortunately, this is again where I believe Hobby Boss may have had a sample of a Saw Art kit and used that. Um, they've certainly corrected a lot of the errors that Saw Art have made, but there's some they've missed. And railings, I think, are a, are a biggie because if you want to display your model with with um, people on it, uh, it's going to look stupid. Um, there is no other word for it. I'll just show you some pictures first I found in the book as reference. You've got to be very, very careful. Well, I have been very, very careful with looking at these pictures because of um, angle and, and um, the way it's portrayed. Like, for example, this picture here. This picture here doesn't accurately show you the height of that railing because if the camera's lower down and the man is three foot away from the railing, it could have made the railing appear a lot taller than it really is. Um, it, needs to, it needs to be pictures of men actually leaning on the railings or, or you know, with their hands on the railings or whatever. Now, if you look at this one down here, you can clearly see that there are there's a man there leaning and I think he's leaning. So you can see that the railings are normal height, you know, roundabouts or just below the waist um, for an average height guy or person, should I say. Um, if we then go over to this one here, um, you can see here there's some guys. This guy here is just about to go over the railing, over the over the ladder. You can see there there's a guy here. I believe he's got his hand on the rail. I'm not sure. There's some pictures here. Again, you've got to be careful of perspective, but um, you get the general idea there, that guy on that, that ladder, just about to step over the railing or go through a gap. Um, and then another really good picture is here. You've got a guy up on the top where I think the railings are the highest, and he's actually just stood there resting his hands, and you can see that that railing is probably about elbow height. So... Um, yeah, let's have a look at the kit. Now I've just got one sprue out of railings. There tends to be some variation in, in height um, throughout the kit. Whether that's correct or not, I don't know. I need to do some, some more research. But um, they basically appear to range between like 14 and 17 millimetres. But it is quite difficult to measure them accurately off the kit because 
some of them will go to the top of the deck like directly on top of the deck and some of them will glue to the side like you can see these railings here they have a side mounting on them so you need to be careful that you know the floor level won't be here as such it'll be here here yeah so that's what we need to, we need to look at so if we think about a railing as being 800 millimeters high in 70 second scale that should be like 11.1 11.2 millimeters and you can see here even with the floor being there you can see this one is sort of 15 millimeters high which it doesn't make a lot of difference you think that's only four millimeters but in 70 second scale that's quite a lot so i'm going to recall the services of um star wars man and if i put his feet level with the that lump there you can see that this railing is sort of almost up to his chest and i think this one is even higher you see this one is almost up on his neck yeah try and get the perspective right for you so you can see these railings are much too high it should be more sort of that height really um to show you these again so if we put his feet level with there there we go so i'm not sure what the scale of bandai figures is like but this is a 70 second scale and that is definitely too high definitely i mean it might only be a couple of millimeters but it's definitely too high which is such a shame because these railings are beautifully molded i'm not sure what diameter they are um i'm assuming in real life they'd be an inch or 25 mil so in 70 second scale they should be what's that um they're 0.87 so they're a little bit thick um they're more like 35th scale size railings um so i'm guessing they should be about 0.4 in 70 second scale but uh you know 0.4 millimeter they bloody snap as soon as you look at them but the um the ship guys do it don't they so yeah something worth considering um <clears throat> i would imagine if you're not going to put figures on your model i don't think it would really get noticed certainly these aren't as bad as the wait till you see the 35th scale ones some of those are just ridiculous um so yeah certainly these aren't that bad i've just noticed look at the detail there look at that railing with the eyelet on it ready for the chain to go through how nice is that also you get all this pipe work which you don't get with the other kits which is nice so anyway yeah there we go um that's the railings um <clears throat> the only other negative i've got as a general is the decals um i don't know about the whole sheet i haven't looked into it properly yet but i can tell you that on the rail cars there are labels on there that say Vaughan and Hinton and Vaughan is front, Hinton is rear and unfortunately Hobby Boss have depicted all four rail cars as Vaughan so they think that they're all front, not the rail cars, the sub carriers, sorry, which is the bit that goes on top of the rail cars, the, um, the bogies. Um, so yeah, there's errors there. So I don't know that the Pedding House do a decal set for this kit for about 20 quid on eBay, you can get it. Um, maybe worth looking at that. I'm not sure how many errors there are. I'd need to do some more research. But, um, you know, is it worth 20 quid to replace two words? Probably not. So, uh, anyway, there we go. Now, the positives. Um, this kit is dimensionally the best. Um, other than that error with the jack being squashed up because of the rail cars, it's so unfortunate <laughs> that Hobby Boss have made an error in their rail car positioning, and as a result, they've made a, a, an error in the actual main body of the uh, of the kit. It's such such a shame because um, it would take a lot of work to correct. But to make those rail cars look right, you need to move them together. Then will the gap be too big between them and the body? I don't know. It, it could be just a case of artistic license to get it to look right. Um, but other than that, dimensionally, the best around. Um, it's got decals, which the other ones don't have. The jacks are in the correct position and they're nicely detailed. Um, you've got the inner framework is included in the subordinates. The, the other kits are just flat. Once you get past the jack area, there's nothing there. Um, very, very crisp moulding. Absolutely gorgeous, <clears throat> gorgeous packaging. <clears throat> there's some slight issues with the bogies, but the shape is okay. The track width is spot on 
and another biggie with this kit you get photo etch walkways and I've had a look since I did my review and it does look like that wherever there were mesh walkways Hobby Boss have given you PE to depict them so that's good news um, so yeah thanks for watching this I was asked the question before about what book did I use just in case you're wondering this is it and here is the ISBN number should you want to get it it's about 20 quid at the moment on Amazon really really good book if you want to build this kit I think it's a it's a necessity um, rather than a nice to have it also covers the Leopold K5 gum I've done a review on the book if you look back as well you'll see there that. you go um, I hope you enjoyed that I certainly enjoyed making it and I enjoyed all the research that went into it uh, if you decide to do these changes then I think you'll end up with a far better looking kit if you do those changes to the barrel you're going to save some storage space uh, because you're going to reduce its length considerably um, you can also then ditch a couple of those rail sections um, but yeah as far as accuracy goes it's it's pretty bloody good isn't it so it's, it's a lovely lovely kit it's beautifully molded very sharp and crisp wonderfully packaged you know 125 pound from uh, e models 130 odd elsewhere um, yeah it's it's by far the best of the bunch in my opinion so I hope, like I said, I hope you enjoyed that. If you do make any changes to this kit, you, you know, a minimum, do the barrel. And the, the simple change I said about on the rail cars, that's got to be worth doing to get more accuracy. Um, to my eye, it just looks odd as it is. Uh, and now that I've set that in your mind, you know, maybe it looks odd to you. And the beauty, of course, is it's a change that could be done um, even after the kit is finished. You could just, you know, move those holes over. So, uh yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this, please like and subscribe. Um, next up, we'll have the 35th scale monster, which I can assure you is nothing like the quality Christmas accuracy or anything like this one. So, um, yeah, that one's going to be more enjoyable for the correction side of things because we can really get our teeth stuck into that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Bye bye.